Welcome back, and Happy New Year. Here's an age-old question that goes back about 120 years. Which is better, the revolver or the auto? The wheel gun or the pistol? Cylinder or detachable magazine? Well, that, that question goes on and on and on. And what I see oftentimes is that it takes on more of an emotional significance than a realistic one. You know, to weed out the answer for yourself is very, very simple, and uh, we'll we'll talk about we'll talk about how you can actually uh, just go down through the fundamentals and decide for yourself which is going to be the ideal one. Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with owning owning both for different purposes, but if if you're looking for a particular uh, handgun for a certain job, that that discussion uh, can end very quickly just by examining some of the facts. Well, let's look at some fundamental differences between the, between the two types. And these guns have all, been, these have all been thoroughly checked over several times by me. I'm a very fussy, fastidious guy when it comes to uh, safety, and uh, so you need not be concerned about me handling any uh, firearms unsafely, and I'll do that again right here. And so that's it. Certain things are very, very uh, specific and different between the two types. Obviously, the wheel gun is, you know, is it's it's got a inherent limitation based on the diameter of this cylinder uh, for its capacity. You can't extend it in any way. Uh, it is what it is. It could be a five, it could be a five shot uh, snub nose um, revolver, uh, say like a Model 36 uh, Smith & Wesson, or it could have eight or nine shots, uh, but whatever it is, it's a fixed amount. Uh, any of your, any of your Autos, and when I say autos, I mean auto loaders, and it's a, it's a generic term which has been used for years. It goes all the way back to the uh, auto, the ACP, the auto Colt pistol. But, um, you know, obviously you can get extended magazines for uh, any number of your uh, autos, uh, and they typically will have more uh, capacity even to begin with, because even with this, even with this uh, 45 1911, even with its modest seven round magazine, it has the capacity of uh, one in the chamber plus the seven for eight rounds. Uh, and that's, that's immediately uh, more than this model 629, which is limited to six rounds. So if you're looking for, if you're looking, if, if for some reason you need to have uh, a significant amount of capacity, um, it, it's certainly worth considering uh, that a, um, an auto has the distinct advantage. Reloading an auto is uh, certainly uh, a little bit less cumbersome. You know, I've I've got I've got many years of experience in both uh, carrying as a police officer uh, and and instructing as a as a firearms instructor for other police officers. I've got many years of experience. Hundred many hundred many hundreds of times, probably thousands of times, I've uh, loaded these cylinders uh, with all possible methods uh, from uh, speed loaders to just manual loading and uh, different devices that came on the market through the years and uh, you know regardless of what they are they're a little bit more cumbersome and more time consuming and more f fussy than uh, simply stuffing a stuffing a magazine into this into this hand grip here so it has that it has that uh, distinct disadvantage with a uh, revolver, but that only becomes a disadvantage if it's in fact uh, an impediment. You know, for the uh, 
for many, many years, uh, for decades, police officers routinely carried uh, revolvers on the street and had no concerns whatsoever about reloading because uh, it was not considered, uh, a, you know, an essential issue. Um, up until up until relatively recent times, the typical typical gunfight on the street with a police officer involved two or three rounds at, at most, both sides. Uh, it was usually a very uh, swift confrontation that ended quickly, uh, and it, there were no there were very very few sustained gun battles where uh, reloading became an issue uh, until recent years, and um, you know. Society has become more violent. Uh, we've had more violent crimes in recent years, and, and uh, certainly capacity for a person in law enforcement, uh, that, that becomes a, a significant issue. And uh, by and large, most police departments around the country, if, if, if not all of them, have gone to uh, auto-loading pistols for that very reason, because it gives them greater firepower. Um, that's probably the that's probably the, the significant reason why they went to uh, auto loaders. That's it. There's no other reason at all. It's it's it had it had to do. I was there. I was in that selection process when we came down to uh, switching over from six shooters to uh, uh, SIG arms pistols. So there was no other issue besides that. In fact, that that brought along with it some. Some new issues too, because uh, the inherent reliability of a revolver suddenly became a liability with the pistol, because the, the pistol is has uh, is it's not it's not a big it's not a big problem, but it does offer the uh, issue of uh, mechanical uh, failure uh, during the during the course of fire. Um, any number of things can cause an auto pistol to, to malfunction in the course of firing. Uh, whether, you have, whether you have a light hammer strike, whether you have a, a limp wrist, uh, whether it's simply uh, some simple malfunction of the gun, uh, there's, really no, there's really no turning back until you, until you discharge that empty round or that, that, uh, that uh, dud and start over again. It, it requires a clearing process that's not involved with a revolver. A revolver is as simple as if that one, go, if that one goes click, the next one goes bang. It's as simple as that because uh, it, you, don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about reliability. We had to develop protocols for clearing just as the military develops protocols for uh, clearing uh, a bad round with an AR-15 or with an M-16. Uh, police departments had to develop training protocols to teach to teach officers how to quickly return this gun back to back to service if if there's a malfunction. So that became somewhat of an issue. Uh, it's not a significant one, but in the course of a uh, in the in the course of a training session, you would invariably have somebody on the line that uh, had a malfunction and had to clear their gun in the process. So we used different techniques. You know, we used ball and dummy. Uh, situations where we somebody loaded into this magazine before training, they loaded uh, a couple of uh, plastic rounds, dud rounds that, that would not uh, that would not uh, function. So uh, just just so that the officer would learn how to uh, quickly uh, transition from a gun that wasn't firing to one that continued to fire. So that's that. Does that become now? I'm talking. I'm talking in terms of uh, somebody who's more apt to be involved in a. Uh, prolonged confrontation. The average, the average citizen is probably not ever going to be involved in some sort of a prolonged confrontation. Um, despite, you know, despite the scenarios that the different, some of these different uh, schools bring up and everything, it's not, it's not classically, it, in many cases, it's not legally the responsibility of a, a private citizen to be using his, uh, his or her uh, firearm for the purpose of you know, doing house searches and things like that and getting into a co confrontations with multiple suspects. It's, it's typically a self-defense issue. And for that reason, uh, the number of rounds largely uh, becomes a, a non-issue. So I would say that for the person who's a, a police officer, the decision has already been made. And for the private citizen, that's not, 
I don't consider that to be part and parcel of the uh, consideration. Now we'll move on to uh, some of the practical me mechanical issues. <clears throat> the, um, the revolver has got a cylinder gap here, and the cylinder gap is not present naturally in, a, in an auto. Uh, the revolver is a little bit less efficient in that regard because it loses, it loses pressure behind the bullet right, right at that barrel gap. So classically, uh, Auto pistols are more efficient in terms of their in terms of their velocity, uh, their power per you know for the size of the case that they have. Uh, they 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 have a greater amount of uh, a greater amount of velocity to um, to powder uh, ratio. Uh, here's a you know for instance we've got here a, a 357 Magnum uh, case. And we've got a nine millimeter Luger case. You know, there's a difference in velocity, but it's it's not it's not what you would think for the size difference in these cases. The the 357 Magnum case is almost twice as long as the nine millimeter case, and the powder capacity is 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 uh, tremendously different with the 357. And yet the nine millimeter holds its own in terms of velocity. It's it can be well up into the 1,200 feet per second range. So. It's it's more it's more efficient in that regard. That's really a that's really a, a non-issue as far as I'm concerned too because um, you know you can get you can get similar power you can get similar power with either type of handgun. It's just that the ammunition is uh, more efficient in the uh, the typically smaller uh, auto pistol cases. So again, if that's an issue to you, uh, it is. Uh, but it doesn't. It doesn't need to be an issue. Um, there's also uh, there's also the the obvious consideration that even in the largest auto, you've got a very very slim profile. And that slim profile is very compact, and it sits it sits handily against the body. Uh, even in a large frame, uh, 1911 like that. It's, it, it sits very nicely against the body without bulging. And uh, certainly a typical, you know, compact auto, it's even better. And if you go down to the subcompact autos like this one here, it's even better. They're very, very compact. Although regardless of, regardless of the capacity and everything, this one here is actually, this, this compact auto has got a larger profile than this 1911. So, Si the overall size of the gun does not necessarily uh, have anything to do with the, the breadth of the gun, the width of the gun, because this is a double stacked magazine on this uh, nine millimeter, and this is a single stack magazine on this 45. So that dictates a lot of the uh, bulk issue. But of course, weight and weight and bulk is, is one of the biggest concerns for anybody who's selecting a uh, self-defense handgun. So I'm speaking right now about a, a self-defense carry gun. If, if, uh, if, if compactness is very important to you, uh, I would say that the, there's no question that the pistol has got, has got it all over the revolver in terms of compactness. Uh, for equal power, this, this nine millimeter here uh, is, is, will outgun this uh, 38 special right here. Uh, in terms of in terms of firepower and uh, well, this is actually an, uh, a 357 Magnum. So in terms of power, this this one here certainly has greater power. But um, if you're having if you're having a discussion about which one is uh, more easily, you know, carried uh, in a, in a uh, concealed carry situation, this one would win the call. Um, that's not to say that that's not to say that you can't get relatively compact revolvers. I don't have my wife's I don't have my wife's Lady Smith here. She's off to work, so uh, I don't have that to demonstrate. But that's simply a that's simply a a, a bobtailed. Uh, it's it's a hammerless Model 36 with a, a titanium frame. Uh, it's very very light and it's uh, it's quite compact. She prefers that, and sim the the very simple reason is is. Similar to so many, so many women, they just simply do not like trying to slide, pull the slide back on an auto. 
their 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 finger strength, their hand strength is just is just in many cases, especially with an older woman, uh, they they can't reliably grasp that slide and pull it back. And um, you know that that slide resistance is a serious issue for for many people. And remember the the slide spring is proportion proportional to the power of the cartridge. You've got to have you've got to have a heavier slide spring to uh, resist the recoil forces of a heavier uh, of a heavy heavier slide and uh, also the the power of the cartridge case so all those things come into play so for for many people especially for women a revolver is a, is a no-brainer they they simply it's it's a lot simpler they don't have to they don't have to be uh, highly mechanical oriented uh, they they simply know that they push the button the cylinder opens and there's ammo in it, and that's all there is to it. And they can they can shoot it. Uh, you know the training the training process for a revolver is very very simple. Uh, I've I've trained many uh, hundreds of people with the revolver, and quite a number of people uh, who were who were women, and they ne never never one uh, had a uh, issue with learning how to uh, shoot a double action revolver. None whatsoever. And they all became quite competent. Most, most, I would say that uh, statistically, uh, in my career, the percentage of uh, high-grade women shooters is, is far is far bigger than the percentage of uh, male shooters. It's just the way it is. They they pay attention. They pay attention to detail. You know, if I tell, you know, I digress. If if I ask if I ask a lady to squeeze this trigger carefully squeeze it until the hammer falls, she'll do that exactly as I ask. If I ask a guy to do that, he just grabs the trigger. And I say, will you please just squeeze it? I don't want you to grab it. He just goes like that. The, the, the concept of squeezing a trigger is something I have to teach a man. I don't have to teach a woman. They just understand the, the concept. Uh, so that's, and, and they, also have, uh, they also have better attention to detail when it comes to lining up their sights and things like that. Um, it's why when you go into a factory, men are doing all the big heavy machine work and uh, working at lathes and, and women by and large are doing the fine, you know, detailed work that requires uh, patience. So that's, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's the thinking person that shoots best. So I, like I say, I digress, but that's one of the issues with, with many people is they simply, they want a, a simple gun. Uh, and a simple gun is nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Now, you know, I carried an off-duty Model 36 for years and years and years, probably for almost for 25 years. And uh, it was always concealed. I never had any issue whatsoever. Uh, I, know, I know countless officers that did the same thing. So while it's not as compact as this, and while I would prefer to carry this uh, over a... Uh, a six-shooter wheel gun, it's really not so much an issue of the bulk because the, the, dish, the additional bulk in that cylinder width never really bothered me whatsoever. Uh, it, this simply has a little bit more capacity. So um, that can be an issue, but it doesn't need to be. Um, if, you, if, if, you consider the, uh, if you consider the compactness of a, uh, of a pistol to be superior to, you know, the the bulk of a revolver. Well, that's something to that's something to keep in mind. Now, I think I've pretty much covered it when it comes to um, when it comes to a self-defense uh, carry gun. Um, there are there are certain other issues. Um, you know, a, a self-defense carry gun can have you know. I, I'm really not into I'm really not into the railroad tracks all over the top of my gun and underneath it and uh, you know I, I'm just not into that stuff. I like to just pull out the gun and shoot it. Uh, I've never had any trouble with just the regular sights that come with it. Night or day, I'm fine with it. It's it, that just some people like to have all that stuff on there. Uh, I mean, it's really some of them. It looks like it's an HO train set. There's so many grooves on there, but I that's fine. Um, it's just not. It's just not my cup of tea, and it's certainly not something that I go around promoting. If you like to have all that stuff to be able to mount things on, that's fine. But that's one thing that you will find on very few revolvers. So 
you know, they're more adaptable to that particular type of um, that particular type of role. But uh, simplicity can be with either one of them, and complexity can be with either one of them. You know, you can have you can have a this this is a rather complex uh, sighting system. You know, it's adjustable sights. It's prone to snagging on clothes. This is not the sort of this is not the sort of uh, revolver to be carry if you're carrying if you if you think you're going to be snagging on things. You'd want to have you'd, you'd want to have cleaner fixed sights that uh, are, are much smoother. You might even want to have uh, a, a a hidden hammer. In other words, a hammerless. They're, they're not hammerless. The hammer's inside, but you might want to have a, a, a so-called hammerless revolver, which will not snag on clothing. And that's what my wife has with her uh, Lady Smith. So that's also a consideration. Um, it's a it's a very streamlined gun, and it, it it won't snag on anything. And I did I did mention the reliability. I don't think there's anything more reliable than a good revolver. Um, you know they're they're prone they're prone to going out of reliability and becoming dysfunctional if they should be mishandled if you should drop one because the cylinder alignment in a revolver is very critical. Uh, you know, whacking that cylinder hard if if you drop it can put it out of service. It can bend it can bend the uh, center the center pin. So that's something to consider. Most people are not prone to throwing their guns around, so that again becomes a non-issue. Uh, police officers for, for many decades carried their revolvers on duty, you know, and got into scuffles, their guns fell down, you know, fire escapes and things like that, and they still picked them up and they worked. So um, that, I, I, think that that's, I think that that's really uh, not something to be concerned with. Now, um, I'm going to go into the sporting aspect of it. I think we've covered, I think we've covered the, um, I think we've covered the uh, concealed carry aspect or the duty carry. Duty carry, everybody has already made up their mind on that issue. It's, it's a matter of going to the, the uh, auto pistol simply for firepower. Um, and for the and for the concealed carry, I think the, the door is wide open. You can you, whichever one whichever one suits you. Do not fall into the uh, ridiculous notion that you have to do what everybody else is doing and and do what's you know on the latest cover of the American Rifleman or uh, Guns Magazine or anything like that. Um, you don't have it, it's it's your decision. It's your money. Uh, you can you can put up your your checkbook and buy anything you want and and feel free to do it. This is still America, and you don't have to worry about uh, being guided by somebody else's notions of what's best. There is no such thing as best in this game. I I own them all. It doesn't make any difference. It, it, to me, they all they all fulfill the same purpose. They they all shoot just fine and. Um, I'll go up against anybody any day on the line, and they'll, you know, it, it's of no concern to me. Now, um, for sporting purposes, uh, what sort of sport are you talking about? If you're talking about, if you're talking about, for instance, bullseye shooting that I used to do years ago, um, and I and I gave a number of lessons on that uh, that sport, how to shoot precision shooting. It can very easily be done with. A revolver. You can you can shoot many people shot bullseye through the years with uh, Colt pythons and and uh, Smith and Wesson, uh, you know, uh, combat masterpiece model 19s and everything else. And uh, you know they they do just they do just fine. They they feel nice in the hand. They have a terrific balance to them, and they they shoot they shoot they have typically superb single action triggers and. There's there's nothing that's there's nothing that's any finer than shooting uh, a revolver uh, when it comes to precision. That was that was oftentimes very much preferred for uh, many competitive shooters. So uh, and they were very very accurate in that game too. They also they also sported a, a long sight radius that sometimes was uh, hindered with a uh, uh, with an auto because an auto although you can have a you can have an auto like this that has a similarly long sight radius. When you compare it to, when you compare it to the typical target gun that had uh, a six inch or seven inch barrel or something, now you're talking about uh, the auto having a, a somewhat of a somewhat of a, a disadvantage. Um, 
certain gunsmiths, you know, slotted the front of these uh, slides so that you could slide that front side out. Basically, it was out extended beyond the uh, slide. But that's a that's a target that's a target proposition, and it's really not practical. Uh, and not, I certainly don't recommend it for a, for a gun which is uh, going to be subject to uh, any kind of you know uh, heavy usage. Those were guns that went right into a uh, typically a, a guy had a woman or a guy had a, a Packmeyer box you know that opened up on the front and they had a scope on the side inside it and they had a drawer with all the different handguns inside for their competitions and everything. That day has pretty much come and gone for the, for the main, uh, but there are still a lot of aficionados out there that love that sport. So the guns are still very much, they're still very much competitive in that realm. Where they had a distinct disadvantage was during the timed exercises uh, in rapid fire. You know, to try to reload, to try to reload a 38. Uh, wad cutter uh, to keep you know within the time clock was far more difficult than uh, using what they used to use was uh, 38 wad cutter they, they were 1911s which were modified to fire uh, 38 wad cutters and it was a uh, quite a strange it was quite a strange beast but uh, that was that was the way a lot of guys went simply because it enabled them to have a uh, the, the the simplicity of a uh, auto uh, for reloading uh, in timed matches. But again, that's really a non-issue you, unless you're into that particular sport. But that does at least show you that you know they, they, they compete on the same level when it comes to accuracy. I've never seen I've never seen where uh, a revolver has to uh, take a backseat to a, uh, an auto when it comes to accuracy. Um, now. There's a, I did mention that, you know, revolvers have got, they've got a very, very good long sight radius, even with, even with a shorter barrel. Uh, so that's a very good thing to have. One thing I really enjoy about a revolver over, which I consider to be paramount when I'm out, when I'm out in the field, is the fact that a revolver keeps my brass. I don't have to worry about I don't have to worry about losing precious brass over my shoulder out into the, you know, be hiding underneath leaves and things like that when I'm out in the field and I want to go plinking. Uh, if I'm walking through the woods with Benny and I decide I want to start just plinking and having fun shooting at knot holes in trees or uh, shooting at pine cones or something like that or uh, going rabbit hunting, I don't have to worry about losing my precious brass that, that I just uh, had a hard time, uh, a long time waiting for, to arrive. Um, it, it, stays, it stays with the gun. So that's a fantastic, uh, that's a fantastic uh, uh, advantage with a, uh, with a revolver that the uh, auto doesn't have. Um, you know, it just, I just don't, I just have never seen, uh, I've never seen anybody carrying a, a 1911 into the woods hunting. I've seen, I've seen an awful lot of guys carrying, uh, you know, like Ruger Blackhawks or uh, uh, Colt Peacemakers into the woods hunting, but I've never seen anybody carry a, a, a pistol into the woods. They're just, they're just very clumsy for that purpose, and that's the, that's the biggest reason. Also, too, the cartridges are more when it comes to hunting, the cartridges are more adaptable to the uh, role of hunting than uh, most uh, than most autos. I mean, I've shot my share of porcupines and things with this gun right here. You know, shot porcupines out of trees in this in this area. Uh, you know, it does a very handy job of it. Uh, but it's usually a spur of the moment thing. I'm driving down the road and I happen to see a porcupine up there, and and uh, they're they're really they're really they're really not desirable in uh, in our woods because what happens I mean there's going to be plenty of them forever and ever but what happens is they 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 chew up the they chew up the pine trees uh, like crazy and the spruce trees so this uh, this gun has done a magnificent job of doing that and it's and it's always been with me and that's why I've been using that one because when I'm driving around that happens to be what's in my holster I'd certainly be able to do the same thing with this and if it came to uh, if it came deer hunting, this 44 Magnum, this 629 would be the way to go. Absolutely, the way to go. No matter what I'm hunting, if I were hunting coyotes, 
with a handgun. This would be the gun to use. Uh, it's just, it's just uh, very handy. Uh, it's, it's powerful. One of the, one of the curious things is the uh, popularity of the um, 10 millimeter handgun, the 10 millimeter pistol. Um, it's, it's amazing that it's amazing that hunters have discovered the 41 Magnum all of a sudden in its auto-loading skin. It's, which basically it's not even quite up to the 40. It's not up to the 41 Magnum in terms of uh, power. But um, everybody raves about the 10 millimeter as being the uh, you know, the go-to gun for uh, the auto-loading uh, handgunner uh, for the uh, hunter. But uh, it it does it it does it does nothing that the uh, 41 Magnum has done ever since 1964 when it was first uh, introduced. So uh, if you're looking for if you're looking for a really dynamic. Uh, all-around performing handgun. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. I did a special video on the 41 Magnum. It's, um, the recoil is, is some over 20% lighter than a 44 Magnum, and yet it's known to have, uh, with bullets of similar sectional density, it's got greater penetration. It's a little bit higher velocity, too. Uh, there's, no, there's, no, um, there's no flies on a, a 41 Magnum whatsoever. So I, I'd like to see it stick around for many, many years and and uh, keep uh, keep on trucking. Um, I don't know if there's anything more to say about that. Oh, I, there is. Um, when it comes to hunting rounds, the advantage that a the advantage that a revolver has uh, is is quite distinct. A revolver. I'll, I'll bring this up a little bit closer. If I can. You can see this is a uh, this this is an exposed point, uh, hollow point. That's that happens to be a Sierra bullet, 240 grain, 44 Magnum bullet, and uh, that's an ideal that's an ideal bullet for uh, medium game up to uh, deer size. But you can see that exposed point is something you you would not be able to find on an auto loading uh, pistol. It has to have it, it can have a generous it can have a generous hollow point, but it's limited uh, by its feeding capacity. Its ability to feed is paramount, and uh, it can't have it can't have any exposed lead that would stick to the ramp or get battered up on the ramp. <laughs> so it, it has to have that gilding metal that comes all the way up around that uh, that bullet. So a handgun. Uh, a, a revolver bullet can be more uh, adapted to the real needs of the hunter. In other words, it can be designed for expansion purposes, period. It can be designed for penetration and expansion, whereas the auto, they have to think first and foremost about feeding. Then they have to fit somehow into that package, they have to fit the ability to uh, expand. And that has always been, that has always been a, a traditional issue with, uh, especially with uh, auto-loading cartridges. So uh, while, while you can get certainly good auto-loading uh, cartridge bullets for the, um, for the pistol, uh, the, the better ones are still the ones that are made for, for revolvers. It's just the way it goes. Um, I think that's about it. Again, listen to your, listen to your own needs and assess your own needs very carefully before you do anything. Make sure, you know, don't be bringing home a gun for your, for your bride or for your girlfriend uh, and saying, here, I just got something for you. And don't, don't be so generous as that. Make sure you, make sure you bring her along and uh, the, she, she picks out her own gun because what she, what she likes is uh, likely to be uh, entirely different than what you like or would like to have her have. So, uh, you know, this this was my wife's this was my wife's pistol, and uh, this is her this is her pistol, uh, but she prefers her Lady Smith because she just you know her hand strength she's she's uh, she's no longer she's no longer a thirty year old woman with with the same strong hands just she's getting a little bit arthritic, and so pulling this back is just a real issue, uh, and she she finds the uh, revolver to be much much 
handier and simpler, and she couldn't care less about the little additional bulk because you know it goes in her handbag or her pocket or whatever. So it, it's a it's of no concern to her whatsoever. So be guided by your own needs and you know the things that the things that appeal to you for whatever practical reasons. And uh, don't don't be guided by you know magazine covers and the latest the latest uh, things on YouTube and all that stuff. Don't pay attention to that. There's, there's no no significance whatsoever. What you need is what you need, and it's it's uh, it can be entirely different than uh, your, your your buddy or your brother, your dad or whoever. So enjoy them all. If if uh, you know you have different needs, I, I I have I have different handguns here for different reasons, for different purposes. They're all fine. Uh, but one is not better than the other. So to my Patreon donors, thank you so much for your assistance. Your uh, generous assistance keeps me going. And uh, be sure to subscribe and uh, hit that bell so that you know that uh, I'm posting a video. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year and God bless.